sir if you uh, uh, want to wait we can wait or uh, we already uh, many many people who have joined in so we can start also we can start we can start i think we can start yes. permission of my lord we can yes uh dev you have to bring me on the screen yeah sir you are on the screen already no no on no. the full yes. screen you have to bring all the speakers in, in in the main right now i can see you in the main frame yeah and just uh, take it to the gallery view yeah yeah gallery view is fine it's fine you can start yeah, i can i can see that sir yeah. so good morning and i welcome you all to this uh, webinar on behalf of the indian advocate forum <clears throat> the background of the forum is uh, that in 1998 some of the busy buddy lawyers gathered together and started having meetings interactions and it turned out to be it snowballed into a very big movement and for a few years we had very good speakers and uh, after that it was there was a period of lull and then now during the lockdown period we have picked up again so today's topic is recent amendments in the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 and the question that we asked after this is have we reached the desired goal before i invite a first speaker i want to inform you all that uh, mr sanjay jain uh, senior advocate and additional solicitor general for india in supreme court he is uh, also a speaker today but unfortunately due to the tough times he had some personal problems he is going to be tested today morning for the problem and uh, he has uh, excused himself because of this problem so <clears throat> as i said that all the speakers are well known in their respective fields and do not require any introductions but uh, then i would right now invite mr datta who will not only introduce the topic to you but he will also uh, show the main dimensions of the subject to you mr datta is a very eminent senior lawyer in the supreme court of india and uh, besides being eminent and eloquent in the court he is also one of the most popular in the bar he has been uh, uh, elected as a uh, in the executive committee of 1982 to 1986 and then in 1996 he was also vice president of the supreme court bar association and uh, one of the best things that i remember about him is that he was the youngest vice president of the supreme court bar and uh, you all must be must be knowing about his uh, uh, practice how he uh, fares in the court uh, something uh, which uh, many people in the bar may not be knowing only those people who are uh, aligned to arbitrations may not be uh, maybe knowing that he is uh, an international arbiter and uh, he represents us uh, in uh, many countries in uh, seminars and uh, uh, meetings and uh, goes abroad and uh, he also as uh, you know is a guide to us whenever any matter comes to us regarding arbitration and conciliation act so uh, besides his indulgence as international arbitrator we always find him in the court also uh, contributing to different subjects like constitutional law administrative law uh, in taxation he has a very good uh, um, uh, knowledge so uh it will be a uh, great thing to hear mr rajiv datta sir i invite you to come and introduce the topic and also uh, shows the different dimensions of the topic sir mr datta thank you uh, mr jain and uh, i think at the outset let me welcome justice kurian and uh, thank him for agreeing to be with us today and as you just said uh, <clears throat> mr jain is unwell i think uh, it is something unfortunate we will miss him and i feel uh, that uh, and i pray that he gets well soon he is one of the most eminent counsels that 
Delhi High Court has produced. Not only he is a good lawyer, he is a good human being. So at the outset, let me um, uh, introduce the topic to you today, as you all are very well aware. The topic, of course, is whether we are after these, uh, I mean, we've used the word, the topic uses the word recent. They may not be very recent uh, uh, amendments. The amendments have been coming for a long time now. But have we re re reached the desired goal? That is, that is very important. And what is that goal that we are trying to reach? That, I think, uh, is something uh, which, uh, after I um, go through um, uh, bringing forth what were the necessity for the amendments and some, some of the amendments, because uh, always in webinars, we have a paucity of time, but we have to deal with this topic. And I, I feel Justice Korean will be one of the best persons to tell us what is that we are actually aiming at? What, where are we going? And what is our aim? So at the outset, let me uh, also tell you that post-liberalization of the Indian economy, India started to solve a long pending genuine concern of the Basically, it all started with a lot of investors who were investing in India and also people in, in the, um, uh, in, uh, domestically that there needs to be some change which, which has to be brought about to the alternate dispute resolution system in India because people, when they invest in India, they are very uh, apprehensive of the working as far as the uh, as far as the courts are concerned, because it takes a very long time in India, and then we have number of appeals, etc. And we had to basically chisel out our acts which would help the investors reaching or getting quick justice. We know the phenomena that exists in the entire world. And we had to actually basically fall in line as far as arbitration is concerned. So inspired by the Uncitral model law, the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 was brought in. Drastic changes were introduced by promulgating the Arbitration and Conciliation Ordinance because it had to be brought in and very quickly. It came into effect on 25th of January 1996, as we all know. And it repealed the 1940 Arbitration Act. Lot of changes were given effect to also to pay more attention, and I would say, to the arbitration institutions we have we have number of institutions in india which were existing for a very very long time like we have the indian council of arbitration you are all aware and all these amendments from 1996 were worked in the courts and till we reached a point when it was felt by various high courts and also the Supreme Court in India that this 1996 act needs further chiseling. It is, it, is, it is not working in many, many areas and there are so many problems and con contradictory judgments were also coming from high courts. So therefore in 2015, uh, it was a long journey as you can see from 1996 to 2015. The act had to be further amended and therefore the purpose of the amendments was, and it is very important, the purpose of the amendments was to make arbitration expeditious, efficacious and less cost effective. These were some of the areas which had to be kept in mind and it was also noticed that Many courts had commented on certain areas which were 
not fully uh, coming up to our expectations and as i said the philosophy behind the amendments was to make this act more efficacious to shorten the duration of arbitrations etc etc so number of uh, 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 amendments were made significantly uh, i will mention a few of them you know many of uh, uh, of you are very well conversant with it but still let's get the flavor of them see the first thing that is very noticeable is that the amendments came to include that arbitration must be completed within a short period and therefore there was amendments which which were made to that effect that arbitration the award must be rendered within a fixed period of 12 months very laudable something something that uh, uh, i think we could have just thought of but have we achieved that 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 we will as we go by and by we will we will, we will know some of us who are actually in this stream have, have felt differently but anyway so the other thing which was brought into the act which very significant according to me is that the arbitrators then had to give a declaration of independence this this was something which was very very essential for arbitrations as we all know autonomy in arbitrations is the hub of the issue parties are there they can choose their arbitrators and the arbitrators need not follow any fixed procedure but it was as far as india is concerned it is a well known fact that we were having more ad hoc arbitrations in india than institutional arbitrations yeah, as far as institutional arbitrations are concerned i'll come to it in, in a little while but mostly ad hoc arbitrations and one sector which is which was deeply involved in solving their problems through this method of arbitration was the public sector undertakings etc in india and the and the, their cases involved huge amounts so they had this uh, clause which they always wanted that the arbitrator should be somebody from their own organization it is no doubt that sometimes arbitrations have to be um, conducted by people who have scientific knowledge etc etc but here this, the the idea was very different and it was a pending problem for a very long time that if you go before it's like being a judge in your own cause it it turned out to be like that i am not saying that the arbitrators were not independent but then they were roped in to give a declaration we all know the iba rules and iba guidelines which we are also following now in our arbitration and conciliation act that if a person has been a counsel for an organization uh, has been representing a certain law firm for a long time or has had uh, has been invited to arbitrate by a particular law firm for more than five or six times then it is it is taken that he should not be uh, appointed uh, very frequently now that that is something which was also in the mind of the people uh, mind of the legislators i must at this juncture point out that what i have felt throughout this journey is of amendments is that there has been a legislature versus judiciary which is going on simultaneously as far as the arbitration and conciliation act is concerned why i say this is that legislature was trying to chisel the act bring it more in conformity with international standards by adopting unsitral model law etc etc and at the same time we were we were looking at what is happening in close quarters such as malaysia such as singapore and malaysia even even dubai for that matter where arbitration was very very uh, was growing very fast so when these amendments were introduced as i told you about limiting the time for giving the award independence 
uh, the arbitrator had to give give uh, and and a certificate that he is a uh, declaration that he is independent then also the interim orders section 9 application we, we had a very big problem about as we all know the act is in three parts part 1 part 2 and part 3 and the part 1 applies to the domestic arbitrations and part 2 applies to international commercial arbitrations see we have to pay a very strong attention to india being a part of this globe this global commercial world not only india imports a lot of goods and imports a lot of technology india also exports a lot of technology and also uh, many other uh, you know raw materials etc so there is a lot of commerce which is going on and therefore the the amendments had to be directed and were were to resolve the problems which were being faced they were procedural problems there were problems about appointment of arbitrators it took a long time sometimes the dispute of appointing an arbitrator uh, arbitrator under section 11 went on for months although there was a written agreement so all these things were sought to be streamlined and then one of the biggest problems that as far as international commercial arbitration is concerned was re relating to setting aside of the awards under section 34 and uh, how this 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 uh, unwieldy or uh, horse uh, called the public policy had to be dealt with so th the amendments were made on paper uh, and then uh, it was the the consumer who who had to face the wrath and who came to the protection and who then started uh, further chiseling and i would say cementing this these amendments was our courts and judiciary and i i have great respect uh, for the judiciary of our country which took upon itself the cudgels to resolve these problems and interpret the amendments in such a way that they 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 made the arbitration and conciliation act the philosophy behind it work i will uh, after i deal with these uh, how the amendments were brought in and when they were brought in i will also delve a little on how and uh, the the courts have uh, you know taken upon themselves to to sort out these problems which were arising after the amendments were made see the the one of the significant things which i mentioned was the problem of public policy now now we know that after the amendments the international awards can be challenged on the ground of public policy of india and then the famous saw pipe case saw pipes case was there so what they did was and the amendments that they were seek, seeking to bring in was that we should limit the challenge so that it is not something which is which is as vast as the sea that you can dive into it and you can pick up some hole in it so basically what has happened is that we we had to take two different routes and as i informed you and you know very well that the part 1 of the act applies to domestic arbitration part 2 was always meant for the international commercial arbitration now what has happened is that lot of problems cropped up with regard to applicability of interim orders and also there was a mindset that international commercial arbitrations although they are seated outside and the awards which are rendered if they impinge upon the public policy of india then they can be challenged in india so that is a very very big aspect so then these amendments which had to be made tried to sort that out but ultimately it was sorted out by the courts very shortly i will inform you now the legislature thought in its wisdom that 
international commercial awards should be only challenged on very limited grounds such as the award is if it is vitiated by fraud or corruption secondly if it is in contravention of the fundamental policy of indian law now that that is again a very open ended aspect of this amendments fundamental policy of indian law then there was also something that was brought in was that it is if it is in conflict with the basic notions of morality and justice so we started diverting in our approach to international commercial arbitration awards and also domestic awards and you know now with the amendments as far as the ground of patent illegality in an award is concerned it is only available to challenge in the domestic awards and not not otherwise so the the purpose of saying all this is that we tried to bring in these amendments so that we can make this act work better we all know that one of the factors which was very much required to be dealt with was the awards when they were rendered and they were challenged should there be a automatic stay of those awards or should there be something more than that something we should think out of the box as to how to protect because at a moment an award was given and uh, you know um, as i told you a lot of a huge part of this country is public sector controlled by government even otherwise even, even people who are private people when they lost their cases or the awards came against them they immediately filed a section 34 application and the courts were burdened with all this the question was whether they should get an automatic stay or not then there were there was you know a lot of lot of clarifications were required even in the definition of court whether you could approach the high court directly whether supreme court and high court could deal with section 11 only or whether petitions could go to district judges so all this was tried to be chiseled out and amendments were made and the intention was very clear that we want to make india parallel as far as arbitrations are concerned to the international world but things didn't end there because number of judgments were rendered by the courts and once again we reach a we, we reached a stage when further amendments were required because it was felt by the legislature that if we want to make india a hub of international arbitration the act needs to be further chiseled so therefore in 2018 actually it started 2019 further amendments were made and the intention was very clearly declared by law minister on the floor of the house of the parliament that the intention is to make india a hub of domestic and international arbitration by bringing changes in the law so the so the legislature as we can see is moving forward just to make further amendments so that the law is made more compliant or more parallel to the international world but these 2019 amendments now before that we 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 also know that the law commission and also a a committee which was appointed by the government under the um, chairmanship of justice uh, uh, bn P. P. krishna who, who who headed that committee and gave their findings and uh, the findings were all towards mostly making and strengthening the 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 arbitration institutions in india and therefore these amendments were brought in you all know section 11 sub section 3 where supreme court and high court now have Uh, and and, and uh, they they can they can appoint an arbitration uh, uh, institution 
under uh, in the institution under the aegis of the the arbitration council of india now there, there is an amendment which has been brought in that there will be an arbitration council of india although let me uh, straight away say and uh, i think uh, i would like justice kurian's comments when he will talk on this that we have not notified any of most of these very valuable amendments so far this it, this is this, i don't call it a failure but if it is so important then why should we wait what is what is happening is that all this is getting very diluted for example as i informed you we already have the the indian arbitration council in india for a very long time they are very experienced but we also know the drawbacks see one of the biggest drawbacks which is in the existing system was that we somehow do not want or we there is some 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 lacuna somewhere which which compels us to uh, to curb the freedom I, i i am just putting it this way to curb the freedom or or bring in line only few people of the choice of like this arbitration council now that they are trying to make will be controlled and i use the word deliberately controlled by the government they 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 will have all members who will be appointed by them etc etc see why let us look at one institution which has worked in the world and and i did some uh, arbitrations when i was appointed i was quite surprised how they have uh, found me out that you please uh, i will you be able to do this arbitration but fact is they are very very independent and open mind they don't get guidance from anybody who has some interest in it look we all are indians we all want that india should succeed in all the disputes that arise against india or by india against somebody from abroad but the fact is if it is an independent arbitrator of a, a, a person Who, who, who will who will only deal with this this problem this problem as it has arisen apply the law and also the procedure which is prescribed in the agreement and then render an award and that award cannot be challenged and if it is challenged it's on limited ground we have to accept it we have to accept it. see india one thing which has to be kept in mind throughout whenever we make law in india is that india is not a small country and like like for example or or, or a small place like dubai or malaysia or singapore we are a subcontinent we, we we are we are a huge country and therefore if we try to apply carte blanche law all over india it may it may have its difficulties but our 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 um, report card is very good that is that is the greatest part of this country that we people have given to ourselves a democratic way of looking at our problems we don't enforce we don't force you know even even when you go to hong kong and uh, you know there's a dispute between the mainland and the people in hong kong after all it is a it is a it is a dispute only of thinking thinking freely that's all nothing else hong kong is china we all know hong kong is china but those people want only a little freedom in their thinking not in resolving land dispute and all that that is all that is all something else so let me um, also say one very important feature which has happened is apart from this institutionalization which was tried to be brought in by 2019 is something which the courts had to head on deal with you know for example section 87 and schedule 8 which was introduced by these 2019 um, uh, amendments has been set aside by the supreme court why was it done why why was it that they had to do it because there was a supreme court judgment which was trying to which and i and i say boldly they it was it was to nullify that judgment in the bcci case 
that they brought in section 87 but look at look at how fortunate we are here is the supreme court which rendered its judgment and very quickly sir in 2019 itself struck it down you read the judgment how court beautifully deals with how you are trying to nullify or dilute the amendments of 2015 to a whole lot of arbitration awards rendered in this country and then schedule it. I think I will I will now immediately come to the 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 after the legislature's um, fight I, I would now come straight to how the courts a little little bit about how the courts dealt with these amendments. And to start, let me let me uh, at this juncture congratulate one of our uh, very leading and uh, retired judge now from the Supreme Court, Justice Indu Malhotra. You know, she has now, um, of course, she had a short span in Supreme Court, but during that short span, she has worked very hard, and I am uh, party. I am I'm, I'm, uh, in knowledge of it. How hard she worked doing her court work and also writing this film, this now very famous book, let me tell you. This, this book she has come out with in, in 2020 only is Commentary on Law of Arbitration, fourth edition. Uh, this, is, this is a magnus opus. You know, it is, it is something, uh, when we talk internationally to people, they are saying, see, on paper, amendments in the Arbitration Act and now a commentary so so wonderful a commentary which can be compared with hunter and 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 many other many other uh, you know famous authors and i want to uh, uh, just refer to one comment made in the foreword of that book by a very famous arbitrator a qc whom we know very well and he is a uh, he's very fond of india also and his name of course is S.A.H. Mulan. S.A.H. Mulan in the foreword says, and I want to just take one minute and quote it. It's, it's beautifully summarizing as to what, what where, where we are today in arbitration after the amendments. So uh, Mulan writes in the foreword and I quote, while the prevalence of any continuing practice of anti-suit foreign commercial arbitration is difficult to gauge. The overall signs are that India and the Indian courts are becoming increasingly arbitration friendly. An international reckoned, recognized arbitrator says this. What else do we need? Are becoming increasingly arbitration friendly and more aligned with international practice in the field of commercial arbitration. And then he says what I want to share with you. He says the turning point, of course, was the Indian Supreme Court's judgment in Balko's case. So you see, what is the contribution that is made? Legislature made its amendments. They have a process. They go through it. They debate it. And they introduce it. But then, when it doesn't work, who solves the problem? And he says the turning point was the judgment of the Supreme Court in, in, in Balko's case. Therefore, we can safely now conclude, and I, 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 and I say this, that one can safely now conclude that we are in India on the desired path but we are still to reach the desired goal. <laughs> One or two, two judgments which, which need to be just referred to because our audience is all, all, all lawyers mostly. I, 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 I am told that. See, Bhatia International, a judgment rendered in 2002, again demonstrated a certain jurisprudence which existed prior to all these amendments. And what was that? The previous jurisprudence on arbitration was upheld 
in this case when the supreme court held that unless the parties expressly and or impliedly agree to the contrary the indian courts had supervisory jurisdiction over foreign seated arbitration under part 1 of the act that's according to me in this case the supreme court had asserted once again the jurisdiction to grant interim measures in a foreign seated arbitration then of course it was followed by venture global and then came balco and that's why internationally it is reckoned that it is balco's case which set the right tune the right note was played in balco by overruling the earlier decisions and although it was done on this is something has to be noted it was done on prospective basis now that that also was later on solved but amendments brought about in 2015 by way of section 22 of the act clarified that interim measures in the aid of foreign arbitration remain available in india in line with model law now as i have already mentioned that there was a continuous parallel tussle going on between the legislature on one side and the resolutions and the cementing being done by the courts and uh, the one 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 famous thing is that it was very very quickly that the courts had to do it although we are all aware that still even in the commercial courts act which has come up and one thing i cannot but i have to refer although it is a topic with regard to arbitration that mediation is something that not only is growing in india but is the need of the hour and mediation now of course finds a, a a place in the arbitration act also in section 30 but commercial courts act commercial division they are now there is a clause there is a section which says we must have pre litigation mediation and some of us in supreme court are also trying to do our bit because uh, we we do understand very clearly in supreme court matters come in appeal some matters come for transfer etc between some uh, personal matters but otherwise in supreme court mediation has to be worked in a different way because the parties have traveled two or three courts and they are either some of the parties have already been through two or three mediations also so with this i would like now to end and say as i said earlier that we are on the desired path but we have yet to reach, achieve our desired goal and if india has to become a hub then we have to give up a few of our practices of keeping things close to our chest we must open up we must allow international arbitration lawyers to appear in india to 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 uh, if a party can appoint an arbitrator because the most important thing in arbitration is the autonomy if a person wants a certain arbitrator you must get it if a person wants a certain lawyer to appear you must get it and then the procedure should be such that is equally applied all over the place thank you very much i hope uh, i have not I, i i don't know how much uh, uh, time i have taken but i i was totally unaware of it because i am uh, you know i and i must confess that these are opportunities which are given to us um of course uh, uh, they are happening more more often during the covid period but to share our views and with the with the persons with the with, with our esteemed judges who have held and have experienced both sides on the bench and now as arbitrator so may i uh, again uh, request mr jain to please go ahead and introduce justice kurian and then let us hear just a scurian on uh, uh, on the topic thank you very much thank you sir in fact uh, because sanjay jain was not here 
Yeah, so you had an opportunity to even extend uh, beyond the limit. But now I, I must tell you that there are many uh, of the people who are uh, in the audience who are also uh, very much uh, having a great experience in the field of arbitration. And they might as well ask questions to you. So you will have another opportunity to uh, add on to what you have said. I, I hope we are able to satisfy them. That's all. <laughs> Although it is said that when you are introducing somebody who is so well known, and uh, in Hindi we have a uh, mohavra, we say Suri ko Deepak dikhana. So this is how I am going to introduce Justice Joseph Kurian. Uh, I am going to state the obvious, but uh, there are certain things people may not be knowing. So uh, how he started from his modest beginning as a uh, advocate uh, in 1979 and joined the uh, Kerala Bar Council. And uh, he was appointed the general pleader for the government of Kerala in 1987. From 1994 to 1996, he was appointed as an additional advocate general of High Court of Kerala, representing government of Kerala. And in 1996, he was designated as senior advocate by the High Court of Kerala and in 12th July 2000, he was formally appointed as a judge of the High Court of Kerala. Further, he was appointed as the Chief Justice of the High Court of Himachal Pradesh on 8th February 2010. And then finally, as uh, we saw him as a judge in Supreme Court, he was appointed, uh, uh, elevated on 8th March 2013. It's a great honor to introduce him as he's one of the 10 judges in the history of the Supreme Court of India who has delivered more than 1,000 judgments. It never occurred to me that while you are smiling that you are doing so uh, such a hard work also, my lord. But 1,000 judgments is a great achievement. As a, as a judge of the Supreme Court of India, Justice Joseph was involved in landmark cases like constitutional amendment of NJAC, the famous National Judicial Appointment Commission, and in striking down the practice of triple talaq also, historical. He was part of the six constitution benches of the Supreme Court of India. On the bench, he demonstrated his support for a speedy deliver delivery of justice by disposing more than 8,600 pending cases in the Supreme Court of India. He was a panelist in 19th International Judicial Conference in Washington, D.C. in 2016, and he presented a paper on rule of law initiatives regarding the judiciary. He was also a member of Indo-Canadian Legal Forum Meet in 2017 in Canada. Further, he delivered a lecture on judiciary and social welfare in India at annual lecture series, Khatan Gay Hindu University of Social Welfare in South Korea. And after retirement, we have found a great arbitrator amongst us. He is uh, uh, not only an arbitrator and mediator, but he is also uh, sharing his experience and knowledge with all of us the way he is going to do today. May I now uh, invite Justice Joseph Kurian uh, to come and uh, share with us his experience, his knowledge and uh, uh, regarding this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay, for the um, nice words that you spoke of me. Though how unworthy maybe some of uh, which, uh, but I humbly acknowledge your great appreciation for um, the person in me. It has been a wonderful experience for all of us uh, to meet often in Supreme Court. But uh, post-retirement, um, you may not know that the judge misses you more than you miss the judge. Particularly the one who was always um, um, of the view that um, without bar there is no bench. Yeah, and uh, one reason I, deci um, I decided to stay back in Delhi is to continue my professional service in mediation and arbitration. Particularly since uh, some of my good friends will be still there. 
if i go back to my original place in kerala um you know there may not be much scope for uh, meeting grounds though the pandemic could have proved otherwise because all of us are meeting only on the virtual platforms now wherever you are but it's a great experience uh, to step back in delhi and be in the field of uh, arbitration domestic and international and also mediation and also conference um, on opinions well uh, mr datta has uh, you know in his inimitable style has given a wonderful exposition on the topic as uh, mr ajay would have um, uh, sajay ji would have decided on his concept not also what are these amendments meant for and how far have we reached uh, in attaining the the dreams that we had on those amendments ultimately in making india a hub for um, arbitrations like uh, the earlier hub uh, paris or london or the much sought after hub now singapore or the upcoming hub dubai or even malaysia a uh, reason is in you know, why india is not actually uh, known despite uh, the number of cases where indians and india uh, are parties despite that uh, people don't choose the forum in india that's a big question rajiv said about uh, um, expeditious uh, efficient and uh, cost effective where are we failing is it on uh, expeditiousness or uh, efficiency or cost i'm sure not on the third factor of cost because the type of uh, money that uh, all of us know are involved um, in conducting international arbitrations either in london or in paris or even dubai or even singapore uh, you don't have to spend uh, if you own any um, arbitration internationally that you conduct in india then comes uh, efficiency uh I, from my limited experience so this is my third year from my limited experience i don't find that we are less efficient indian arbitrators and uh, the, the 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 particularly the, the lawyers you, you are seeing mr datta and mr jain here but uh, quite a few lawyers i see um, uh, who are uh, appearing in international commercial arbitration are from india only quite non faces so in the matter of advocacy we are no <coughs> less uh, efficient or uh, you know less smart as far as those lawyers are concerned of course uh, we may not reach anywhere uh, near to that uh, molan you said in you know, because he is not only a lawyer but he is also an arbitrator himself he is an institution himself he is he is a sort of a person no doubt about it i must salute uh, his uh, capacity uh his knowledge and his depth on the subject also but the compared to many cases i have seen you know our uh, dear friends in, in the indian legal fraternity are quite quite uh, efficient and quite effective in presenting their cases and competing with their counterparts uh, uh, in cases then comes the expeditiousness probably it is on this aspect uh we are not on the desired goal don't we are on the desired path this expeditiousness why it is not expedient uh, uh in india um you know so the, the the 19 19 amendments uh, actually we are uh... Ah. now you have unmuted yourself yes yeah 246 uh, yeah. report of law commission that was uh, they were appointed in august 2014 <laughs> look at you know it that the time that it took to reach the shape of uh, um, bill for amendment i'll come to the second part later and the law commission suggested actually the following and the, that was actually the bill also to amend the definition of court to provide that in case of commercial international commercial arbitrations the court should be the high court otherwise you know uh, it was the civil court of uh, jurisdiction but as far as international commercial arbitrations it was uh, uh, um, the, the amendment sought to introduce the high court 
High Court of the state. Then to ensure that in the Indian court can exercise jurisdiction, grant interim measures, etc., even where the seat of arbitration is outside India. Mr. Rajiv Datta referred to um, the, the, the Bhatia, then leading to um, reaching up to Balkans. And the couple of uh, recent judgments, uh, one rendered by Justice uh, Nariman and, uh, and of course uh, by Justice Indu Malhotra. Three, an application for appointment of an arbitration arbitrator shall be disposed of by a high court or Supreme Court as the case may be as expeditious as possible. And an endeavor should be made to dispose of the matter within a period of six days. Uh, do we get a matter uh, under 11.6 even listed in six days? And then uh, notice issued. Then you know, um, of course, um, the the argument on whether there is a prime. That's that is one of the aspects in the amendment. But there is a prima facie case for arbitration itself. Though our courts have been so progressive in saying that in all these aspects of jurisdiction you raise before the tribunal, and um, uh, and also don't come on at every, every stage of uh, 16 or 17 here. You can take it comprehensively under section 24, et cetera. But even for listing an 11.6 application for nomination of an arbitrator, we are not, our courts have not been able to reach anywhere near to the dream, the goal, in terms of uh, the time. To provide that while considering any application for appointment of an arbitrator, the High Court or Supreme Court shall examine the existence of a prima facie arbitration agreement and not other issues. Because, uh, uh, you know, uh, in courts like, because since uh, um, uh, majority of you are quite aware of uh, the practice uh, of this nomination and disputes being resolved in Delhi, High Court of Delhi and High Court of Mumbai, two uh, very commercially important uh, uh, high courts in the country where a lot of uh, arbitration disputes uh, reach either at the stage of uh, nomination or at the stage of interim awards, or at the stage of uh, the challenges. So the amendments, or you know, is, 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 it should be left to the court to take a call as to whether there is a prima facie case, case only on the, uh, the, the issue as to um, um, the existence of a prima facie arbitration agreement and not other issues. Then to provide that an arbitral tribunal shall make its award within a period of 12 months from the date of its uh, entering appearance, uh, entering reference. And the parties may, however, extend such period to six months beyond which the period of extension can only be run by the court on sufficient cause. Now, after the amendment under section 23.4, within six months of entering appearance, you have to complete the pleadings. And within 12 months thereafter, um, you will have to make the award. And of course, the extension is left to the court now. And uh, the Supreme Court has interpreted that this amendment 23.4 would apply only also to the pending arbitrations as well. To provide that a model fee schedule on the basis of the High Court may frame rules for the purpose of, uh, on the basis of which the High Court may frame rules determination of fee for the arbitrator tribunal where a High Court appoints arbitrator in terms of 11 of the Act. Delhi High Court of all the High Courts have seen while appointing arbitrators, uh, um, I think in majority of the cases, they make a mention that the fee structure will be either the fourth schedule or uh, those uh, which are framed under DIC. Uh, at least in three, four of the um, nominations I received from the Delhi High Court, there's a reference that the fee will be governed by uh, schedule four. That gives a certainty, one. That gives uh, less room for embarrassment for the arbitrators. I tell you honestly, left to myself, uh, I am only happy to say that, you know, it's really embarrassing for an arbitrator sitting as a tribunal, asking for the parties, what about the fees? How do you like to fix it? And the parties may say one thing, the arbitrator may not be happy. I've seen such embarrassing situations sitting as a, a co-arbitrator, representing arbitrator also. You know, the, the parties are expressing one view. The arbitrators naturally may not be quite happy with the way they suggested. Then negotiating, it is really embarrassing. So I think Schedule 4 
And as now interpreted by the High Court of Delhi also, it has given a new interpretation on the ceiling uh, by Justice Regapalli's judgment. That really ceiling is not that uh, 30 lakhs, but it is that 30 lakhs applies to that uh, um, um, limit beyond 90 lakhs. <clears throat> so it's a fairly common. International, we, we may not reach in terms of fee uh, in international commercial applications. I've seen the uh, I see rules I seen the Singapore rules. I seen the rules framed by the Permanent Court of Arbitration also, where they charge in terms of the hour, um, the, the time that an arbitrator spends, uh, not while sit, not only while sitting as an arbitrator tribunal, but also in terms of his travel, in terms of preparation, in terms of his reading, in terms of what not. So every minute he spends on an arbitration, even on his thought. Is uh, uh, is entitled to charge, and it comes a very hefty amount. The P under the fourth schedule uh, may not even reach even half, even going by the interpretation uh, by the Delhi High Court um, uh, on the ceiling. It may not even reach just a half of the P that uh, in international commercial arbitrations they, uh, they they charge. But I'm told that uh, even that decision is subject to challenge the Supreme Court, and Supreme Court issued notice. I do not know. Now, what would that be? For schedule has given, according to me, uh, uh, an honorable uh, fee structure for the arbitration tribunal, particularly after the uh, amendment, uh, um, uh, after the judgment uh, of the High Court of Delhi. To provide that the parties to dispute may at any stage agree in writing that their dispute be resolved through fast track procedure and the award in such cases shall be made in a period of six months. That is under section and that's also another beautiful um, uh, amendment that has been introduced. Put on fast track, where the parties agree on the pleadings, parties agree on the fast track procedure. And there is also an embarrassing provision there. In fast track awards, uh, the tribunal is entitled to additional fee. What is that entitlement? Nobody has uh, said so. But in any case, forget about the fee, but I'm saying that fast track procedure where the parties, both parties decide to dispense with the uh, the procedure rigmaroles and then you know, come to the brass task at their list and uh, argue the case out and uh, go for an award, a fast track award. That's a very important uh, amendment that has been introduced, uh, uh, the, the 19th Amendment. To provide uh, for neutrality of arbitrators when a person is approached uh, in connection with uh, possible appointment arbitrator, part of which uh, has been referred to by Mr. Rajiv Datta. Uh, when the um, dealing with the judgment uh, where eight schedule have been struck down. But uh, the declaration under section 12 uh, read with uh, the declaration in terms of his, uh, his uh, involvement or interest uh, as a very, uh, uh, what you call, uh, um, uh, uh, elaborately laid down in the schedules. That has uh, saved the grace of uh, the tribunals because the um, the challenges were mainly on those grounds uh, post award. To provide that an obligation to challenge the award is to be disposed of by the court within one year. This is again an issue as far as India is concerned. A challenge under section 34. I do not know from the experience of any of the lawyer friends uh, listening to me, whether any challenge under section 34 by any court in India has been disposed of um, within one year. The, the way the notice is issued and the party appearing, seeking time for a counter. I do not know what is the scope for a counter um, when a challenge is made because everything is on record. It's, the, the court cannot go beyond uh, what is spoken to in the award and the records uh, in the award. But still, you know, as lawyers as we are, we give time, uh, we, we must get time because, you know, uh, it is so. Because we have to counter the uh, arguments there. Then it goes for hearing, then comes the judgment. So we are not able to, I don't think the new 34 has been, or is being disposed of um, within one year. Oh, only probably, I must also salute uh, the Delhi High Court, uh, which is actually you know, at the threshold. There is, an ex there is a very, very uh, elegant scrutiny at the threshold. Not in every matter they issue, it's not uh, a notice uh, on motion. Is actually they apply their mind, and there are quite a few awards they decline to interfere at a threshold. Uh, they decline to that. That's a very good scrutiny, and there's a very good approach as far as uh, Delhi High Court is concerned. 
the amendments proposed uh, those so these are the amendments that mainly uh, were so, sort actually so actually we fail of the three aspects on um, efficiency expediency and uh, cost effective we fail only on this aspect of uh, expediency only one reason uh, why uh, no i am uh, one of the remedial measures i would like to suggest is under section 30 Uh, a reference has been made by mr rajiv on section 30 also from my experience as a, an arbitrator now on the third year now say so i have made several experiments on section 30 uh, settlements because uh, it uh, you know the wording of section 30 it is actually it is for the court to encourage settlement though it is uh, put in double negative it is not incompatible with the arbitration agreement for a tribunal Uh, to encourage settlement of dispute with the uh, agreement of the parties may use mediation conciliation and other procedures sound sound sir so your device is muted sir in fact uh, my book that on that uh, button yeah yeah it has given a lot of uh, uh, leave it to the the tribunal to take call to encourage settlement they can using mediation using conciliation or any other method what is this any other method i have experimented many methods i'll tell you a couple of uh, two three examples uh, say I, i i got a, uh, one of my first uh, uh, what you call arbitration experiences post retirement was from the dic i ended up here and then uh, on the first posting itself i found there is nothing in this case in the sense which the parties cannot settle um uh, it had also a bit of international ramification also so uh, i with the i i made the lawyers agree i made them agree that you know it will not have any repercussion on their professional fee that is very important i i so i told them that you know, i'll see that you know uh, you, you will get your fee despite whether it is settled or argued and uh, decided um with that you know uh, with their consent i called the parties and the parties came with the cooperation of the lawyers uh, i settled the case um, on the second sitting though uh, i suffered uh, 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 what do you call <laughs> i suffered uh, uh, in the sense in the, there, there was a uh, you know, repercussion on the fee aspect of it but uh, that's immaterial um, because uh, to me personally i would say an arbitration that is being settled this should be encouraged by the Uh, the issue not have a bearing on the fee to the arbitral tribunal particularly when the tribunal takes the initiative to settle the matters you know be that as it is a different issue in the second sitting it was settled uh, with the cooperation of the lawyers and uh, cooperation of the parties another experience uh, where you know um, in a case where i found during the course of uh, um, um, the proceedings i found that of the uh, eight claims four of them uh, can be settled so that is another experiment i made so wh- why do you spend your time on the whole uh, issues uh, to be tried in arbitration so those issues i segregated with the consent of the parties that uh, uh, and those were referred to a mediation a professional mediation and those four issues uh, um, i'm happy to say that you know the the, the basis of uh, the dispute was settled there so it was easy for us in arbitration to proceed further because the main contention issues were settled and then very partly something left where you know the parties cannot settle but uh, an award needs to be made on certain aspects which uh, the parties uh, should take forward so it was easy for us uh, to take forward when the main uh, disputes were settled in mediation third um, um, uh, experience of mine even after argument of the whole case i am so happy knowing my nature uh, one side of the lawyers uh, one side one side made a suggestion knowing my your knowing your lordship we were wondering uh, why this suggestion is not forthcoming um uh, and they said no we are open i was so happy it was a very contentious matter because the uh, uh, and it was little sensational also if not sensitive so i was reluctant to uh, ask this question first as to whether are you prepared for a settlement uh it would have had other repercussion but i was so happy that it came from the parties that and then i uh, i caught up uh, that opportunity and then um um uh, you know uh, initiated the process of mediation but there was one condition 
they insisted that we will agree for mediation only in case you are the mediator. That was something very important uh, for them. I said, you know, it's embarrassing for me because uh, after mediation, because in mediation, uh, mediation, the fundamental basis of mediation is confidentiality, neutrality, etc. Neutrality, I have no problem, but the confidentiality, because in mediation, you may confide so many things to me. Uh, and uh, 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 in case the mediation fails, how do you proceed with the arbitration? You know, I was, uh, 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 you know, it was one of the moments I was emotionally stuck. They said, you know, we are sure that it will not fail. <laughs> we are sure it will not fail because we have faith in you. You, uh, you must be the mediator and proceed. And I'll cut it short in time because of the time, because we have a lot, uh, I need a lot of, um, I mean, I, uh, Mr. As Mr. Ajay said, you know, we need to have a little more interactive session. Yeah. So uh, on their request, I myself uh, mediated on the um, disputes and uh, I'm so happy uh, and uh, to, to, you know, to, to the level of their expectation, it could be sitting in both parties who are very happy that you know, instead of uh, an award being made and then the base same being silent, because one of in awards, as in any other case, you know, nobody would like to uh, suffer a, a, a defeat. Nobody would like to say I have suffered an award. They will definitely challenge, go to the civil court, and then further appeal. It takes, you know, there is neither execution. You don't eat the fruit of it. Uh, as Mr. Data said, you may not be able to be the fruit of uh, your litigation because the whole purpose of arbitration is to you know, take it outside the court and to have it expeditiously settled in a friendly manner. Uh, if you see the, I, was, uh, I always used to tell the people that you know, if, if the arbitration and conciliation, the very uh, introductory uh, uh, paragraph also says uh, arbitration is a private disinterested, uh, arbitrator is a private uh, disinterested person chosen by the parties to a disputed question for the purpose of hearing the contentions and giving the judgment between them to whose decision called an award. Uh, um, uh, 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 it's a uh, arbitrator. Arbitrator is a technical name of a person selected with the reference to an established system of system for friendly determination of controversies, which though not judicial, yet regulated by law. It's a friendly uh, um, uh, mode of uh, <coughs> uh, what they call uh, disposal, uh, and all of the all of you who have appeared in uh, tribunals uh, uh, are quite aware, you know, how friendly are we? Unlike uh, the the high, <laughs> high highly stressed uh, uh, stage or state that you see in court. Uh, it's a very friendly, you, you can even sip a cup of uh, tea in between and then, you know, you argue and, you know, introduce the subjects and, you know, it's a very friendly atmosphere in our petitions generally. I've seen exceptions also um, where uh, the muscles have been stiffer uh, than the court. Uh, I, I cannot, uh, left to me, neither in court nor in arbitration. I can't be that stiff-necked person uh, in arbitration or in court. Yeah, I'm saying it's a very friendly uh, model of determination. And you know, in the, if, you, if the arbitrator is good enough to, to see that, to create an atmosphere of a friendly determination, a friendly atmosphere of um, the contesting parties, I'm quite sure, you know, you can work wonders uh, in section 30. Now, I had a situation where, you know, after passing the award, is it possible for a settlement? You know, the arbitrator becomes functus officio. You know, the parties made a suggestion. If the lordships can make uh, your mind as to, generally, we, you know, generally the lawyers will know after arguing a case where, where the judgment uh, is likely to go. A good lawyer will always know after a, 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 after a detailed hearing of a case, uh, what is the likely outcome of a judgment? So in one of the cases, one suggestion was, you know, now that the picture is clear, um, we would like to uh, seek some more time that, you know, that we will sit together and see whether something is possible. <coughs> now that the award is almost uh, on the end. So I put off the award and then uh, the parties uh, with the um, um, assistance of the tribunal also were able to. The, the, the reason is, you know, a bird in hand is worth a ten in the bush. That's the principle. 
I convinced uh, one of the in one of the arbitrations. I said, you know, you take it to a professional mediation. Uh, you don't have to pay any extra fee. I will pay the fee from my uh, fee that you already paid or that you already deposited. Because I really wanted the parties, you know, not to suffer anything more because of uh, mediation. Because uh, in in courts, one of the complaints I have heard is that you know the the courts routinely send it to mediation only to <laughs> only to buy time or only to you know uh, recuse from the case or something like that. You know, uh, go for mediation. Go for, uh, it's not asked like that. I said you know you don't have to pay any extra money also. So I passed an order saying that you know uh, these parties uh, will subject themselves uh, with their agreement, of course, yeah, as in out on the arbitration is party autonomy. So to mediation, without uh, the agreement, express agreement uh, of the parties, nobody can compel you for mediation. So I, with their consent, I told them you don't have to pay extra fee. I uh, I spoke to the mediator regarding his fee, settled his fee, and then uh, an order was passed. That this money will be paid by the um, uh, by the arbitrator from the fee that is due, due already deposited, etc. So, and that is also uh, working beautifully well. So, what we need to uh, address is actually the expediency. If you really want to make India a hub uh, for uh, arbitration, expediency, uh, making it friendly in terms of uh, time, in terms of the atmosphere and less interference by the state. Um, uh, since Mr. Datta wanted me to refer to uh, touch on that subject also, I, I, I agree. Uh, we had a wonderful amendment introduced in 1919, but uh, <laughs> majority of them have not been notified. We have a statute now, but not notified. This is actually something very uh, disappointing in the sense, you know, uh, see the, how the, the executive is in control of uh, legislative yet. The, the legislative intention is clear now. But uh, there is uh, executive um, uh, um, repository, uh, what they call, uh, power of the executive as a repository for execution or implementation of those provisions is still you know, reserved to them and they are to be notified. Uh, um, this, this happens to many of the laudable amendments in India. Even some of the laudable amendments in, on CPC, you know, they were uh, amended but notified far later. Likewise, in an arbitration also, uh, this is not a healthy trend. The moment uh, the, the will of the people is uh, explicit in terms of uh, explicit by way of an amendment uh, into a legislation, then the executive should not be left uh, with uh, such sort of uh, uh, wide power to make it, you know, still within their hands as to how to control the will of the people that is uh, expressed uh, on the floor of uh, the parliament or the state legislature maybe. So therefore, you know, the, the executive interference uh, should be minimized if you want to be, uh, make uh, India more arbitral friendly. Third, you know, uh, in many of the uh, international arbitrations, um, it is the um, um, national um, institutions, uh, or rather national corporate bodies, uh, which, uh, uh, are one of the parties. So say the case of um, ONGC, say the case of Steel Authority, take the case of NHAI, take the case of, um, um, yes, um, there are uh, IOC, yes, but there are many like that. You know. um, for them, uh, naturally, I don't say naturally, normally, normally they suffer an award. Because of, you know, because of uh, the, the CAG, syndrome they won't leave it there they have no freedom to let's 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 take it forward even after suffering in the award also let us uh, call the partisans have a uh, discussion whether they are uh, they are willing to forgo a little of interest uh, so that you know we can pay the money and finish it off nobody has that uh, i don't say audacity no don't say that courage nobody has that freedom courage is freedom to take a decision nobody is prepared to take a decision in india because of you know they 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 are hundred uh, hundred after uh, after so many years also, so that is one of the reasons. Uh, unlike uh, in Singapore or in Dubai or in I don't know where you get an award, that's end of it. Nobody uh, I know nobody normally takes it uh, beyond a point. Then they leave. Then they put an end to a, a dispute. You know, our culture here is you know never ever leave it matters there. 
even after a full fledged adjudication also you will try all methods even in supreme court now we have review we have curative it, it goes like that i am saying in, in the extreme side of it uh, and as arbitrations are concerned all these uh, corporates uh, national corporates i must say national corporates they won't leave it there. they just take it uh, um, to 34 then to further appeal to supreme court i am told 90% of the awards where uh, these national corporates are involved are challenged uh, for one reason or another in courts and even if uh, it is uh, rejected at the threshold or so it takes couple of years we can very easily you know put off uh, the execution by couple of years see in 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 a in a commercial arbitration where you know Uh, the the award involves a huge amount even couple of years even couple of months make uh, make a difference quite a lot of difference so the the, the the expediency in arbitration expediency in execution expediency in the procedural matters are actually the 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 nightmares for the parties uh, internationally to make india a hub this is from my experience and uh, um, Uh, the second aspect i'm saying is you know we have to make it more friendly in terms of uh, the procedure in terms of um, um, the uh, the conduct and in terms of um, the execution uh, i don't know whether like order 38 we need to have a system of uh, a pre deposit of uh, something like that you know after hearing some part of the matter the 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 tribunal itself should uh, have some power to for direction to make a deposit there is a power of course no doubt about it but uh, should it be more made more rigorous so that you know soon after the uh, award the same is released uh, making it subject to i don't this are very complicated questions but we need to address such concerns of uh, the parties where you know they should feel free that here is a place called india where and we are sure to get justice Uh, justice no expedition justice on the, the integrity of justice they are quite comfortable i know they have a very high praise for the the quality of justice in india but uh, they have their own reservations with regard to the expediency they have their own res- uh, reservations with regard to the the conduct of procedures in india uh, the the procedure rigmoroles uh, and of course uh, they have no grievances at all regarding the fee because they are very happy about the fee structure in india so on these two aspects uh, probably we may have to address, make it uh, more settlement friendly also if you are able to address this concerns i'm quite sure uh, india will be made uh, india can be made a hub uh, for uh, arbitrations and before i conclude let me also touch into one more aspect uh, that's one aspect in the under arbitration conciliation act both domestic and uh, internationally where we have not experimented so far that's on conciliation <laughs> that's a, an a, a, an exclusive part in itself i, I do not uh, find um, uh, either as a sitting judge or in the of course in the in the arbitration which i conduct now i am experimenting conciliation also because in conciliation you have um, more leeway uh, as a conciliator uh, rather than mediator mediator can only facilitate uh, facilitate the parties to reach a settlement whereas in as a conciliator you can have um, Uh, in a, a, an evaluative uh, role you can have a persuasive role you can have a little more authoritatively uh, require the parties to come to terms etc also so i think that is also something that we, we can experiment in india i am doing it in domestic arbitrations uh, partly successful also because of the faith people have um, in the system and in the tribunal Uh, is partly successful so i think that's also something which we need to experiment so as to when we uh, address the concern on experience thank you so much uh, we will have a bit of interaction i'm sure uh, mr datta is waiting for the people to ask questions to him uh, and he is full fully ready to address all those questions thank you all the best and god bless thank you sir am i audible yes uh i think uh, after this interesting uh, 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 talk by justice kurin joseph i can see a lot of questions coming up and mostly i mean they are on a positive side some of them are agreeing with him some of them are very happy that uh, they are listening to him and but before i uh, start the questions i want mr datta to say something about 
the matter and uh, say, I mean, uh, give uh, a concluding uh, tone to the whole talk that we had today. Because questions, they are going to start. So Mr. Datta can have a few minutes for that. I invite uh, Mr. Datta to say. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jain. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. I uh, wish to say at the very outset that I do not know ev about everybody else, but I have got something today which is going to churn in my mind because, you know, we, we, we uh, all, I, I must tell you this, that why arbitration uh, was something which uh, 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 came close to me was also because I practiced for a number of years on laws which I've already laid down. Some amendments here and there, yes. But arbitration is growing in front of me. Something that is daily happening, something new is coming and that excited me no end. And let me tell you, mediation for the same reason excites me even more. Because I, I here is an opportunity. And today I must tell you, I have now got something very valuable you, you you know when i say value of value for, forget forget the money part of it i don't think people will get such uh, uh, such things to ponder and think about when you are thinking about yourself as a participant in this process which is developing now, the first thing that i have found out is that when we grapple with and we, and we want to know what is the desired path? Uh, and, 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 and we are on the desired path, but we are not having the desired goal. Let me say, out of all the things that were mentioned, I think Justice uh, 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 Joseph has now given to us something very, like, like two or three bullet points. Think about these. And if you work on them, you might get something. First is expeditiousness, which is what is lacking in it. I, you know, uh, he has explained in detail about the money part of it, about the, uh, uh, the strength of the arbitrators, the evaluative justice that is done. Everybody is satisfied with all that. But one thing which people are not satisfied is expeditiousness. See, uh, 34 challenge. I mean, I, I was just, uh, it was going on in my mind that I, how many matters I'm appearing in 34 from both sides. And every time we get a date and uh, look, I don't blame the judges at all. I'll tell you the reason is not the judges. Reason is we are arguing like an appeal. Once once or twice I was told by a very eminent judge in Delhi High Court. So don't you think there is something uh, less that you should do in this petition? You are arguing as if you are arguing an appeal. And I was ashamed. See, I'll tell you one more thing I have learned is that as a senior counsel, you must have the courage to wear that gown on your shoulders. It is not as if we go there and you start because the client has said this and your instructing lawyer is saying this. Go ahead. Go, go, go on with it. And uh, you are being paid daily. So expeditiousness and the Section 30 experiments which he has said, I am amazed. Even after an award is there, parties have come. Because why? Let us be very categorical. What is left is a left, a lot is left to the arbitrator. It is the arbitrator who is generating this, this, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I should say feeling inside the parties. And then one very good thing, if there are 10 issues, Four issues can be settled. We will argue the rest. Four will settle right now. Now, see, who does all this? Firstly, your involvement has to be 110%, not 100%. He mentioned about ICC. When I was doing an ICC arbitration, every week I used to get a mail, apart from all other mails. It, it was a very tedious process for me because I was not used to that process. Every day, you have to explain how many hours you have spent on the matter. So you can't say, I spent one hour. Maybe once you can say, but then your conscience says, no, I don't think this is a correct thing to do. Then what do you do? 
then you spend time not to earn but to get into the matter your chairman calls you up and asks where are we because procedure or order is all, all, already there he has to everything is streamlined so you have to work arbitrators work according to me is so hard see after doing 136 practice for a long time in supreme court one gets used to a very different thing you you may prepare your case you go inside the court matter is disposed of you come out you are free once this arbitration starts you are not free till it ends because every day you have to get involved and now of course the amendment is there you you can say hearing from day to day oral hearings can be from day to day no problem parties cannot even so it is a lot on the arbitrator lot is left to the arbitrator about the time friendliness and then one thing he said and i noted it very well that i uh, must ex- explore this more that of course executive uh, interference interference should be less we will we will have to abide our time on this we will not go into that arena at all and and then one very important thing he mentioned and i have noted it that if after uh, the arbitration starts once you have heard the parties to some extent and explored the dispute you may pass an order and ask some party to deposit a certain amount i i am telling you i was nowhere near it after the award is passed you challenge the award you deposit the amount something else during the arbitration and it is sending signals so something of immense value that i have got today b see a judge i think he did refer to somewhere that a judge will do his work according to the law and according to the time he has in the court but as an arbitrator you have to become a friendly person you have to be a friend of that now that dispute resolution is something which is given to you how it came to your in, into your space it's all only something working somewhere else you don't know like cases used to come say how 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 you come to me that is a separate issue but most important and I, at the end one one chapter which remains always shut in this arbitration conciliation act is part 3 <laughs> and he's right a conciliator has a participatory role he can evaluate he can participate suggest not a mediator you have to complete all the time tell the parties in mediation i am here only as a facilitator you you decide you decide although you want them to decide in a particular manner you cannot tell them it's going to be your settlement so a lot of things and i i i am very grateful i i have as i pointed out i have uh, picked up and learned so much uh like a like a student and uh, i hope i will god will give me opportunity to exercise and imp- implement this i i i'm so grateful to just to study uh we'll take the questions now if uh i'm permitted yeah yeah please ask just to uh madam lata prashad is from bangalore they you can uh, unmute her I I just unmute her just one second. You you should bring Justice Kurian on the right. Sir, uh, sir, your mic is off right now. Honorable sir, yeah, it's fine. Honorable sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Lata, you can go ahead with the question. Honorable sir, it's a privilege to have heard you, sir. And uh, yes, we have we have been very lucky to sit through and uh, hear you at length uh, on this particular uh, subject, sir. Uh, I am a mediator from Bangalore. We have been doing extensive work 
in mediation and mediation has been catching up very much so in india i know the higher stakes uh, that are involved in uh, arbitration uh, uh, contracts but can that not be still uh, be taken up largely uh, through the uh, mid r method because of the enforceability of uh, foreign awards also there is a risk here in india and parties are not happy if they are they are having uh, uh, if they are based on the considerations of the law governing the uh, as as it is governing in that particular country so they are not very happy about what is happening in the scenarios in indian courts though the recent amendment has come in sir so what do you have to say about this how does it uh, go ahead uh, especially with the enforceability of foreign awards in indian courts yeah lada um, say r mandar or mandar uh, are all concepts uh, now fairly known to everybody um, uh, both in international and domestic arbitrations so uh, this uh, mandar uh, certainly can be uh, experimented it all depends on the tribunal and it don't, don't depends on the cooperation you the lawyers extend to the tribunal that you now we are able to take it forward number 1 number 2 unlike the commercial courts act you know in commercial courts act it has been made mandatory for a pre litigation um, uh, yes. mediation but unfortunately you know uh, that has become uh, 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 what do you call uh, okay. just a farce in the sense you know like in the family courts act uh, where, where you go for a matrimonial dispute you have to go first to the counselor <laughs> Uh, and you know it's like a, ho- a doctor in a government hospital how many cases a counselor can handle every day no all the, all the cases he goes to the counselor he asks the name dispute uh, are you ready not ready Cons- counseling failed and it goes to the court like was you know the pre uh, litigation uh, mediation yes. in commercial court act it has been entrusted to the legal service authority not that uh, I, i don't have any faith in that authority i do have a patent authority because uh, as a lawyer i myself have uh, uh, been in the forefront for introducing that uh, consumer interest uh, protecting the consumer interest and getting this act also legislated i remember those good old days um, but i'm saying this that you know when it goes to that uh, authority you may not always get the type of uh, mediator that you would expect uh, to mediate in commercial disputes so according to me the freedom should be uh, reserved to the parties to choose yes. the mediator because um, as rajiv also told and lada also knows it quite well it's not a joke mediation is not a joke it needs a skill it needs an uh, it, it needs a lot of uh, what they call the credibility on uh, cred- cred- uh, the credibility counts a lot it it needs a lot of exped- um, uh, what they call the expertise also um on this aspects you no know, because you need a third eye and a sixth sense i always tell the mediators yeah if the mediator does not have a third eye and a sixth sense any mediation um, is likely to fail uh, sometimes you need to have a seventh sense also uh, in corporate disputes <laughs> uh, because you know you need to be a negotiator you need to be an evaluator but that at the same time not expressing it also so that is uh, the the situation so uh, i agree lata that you know we need to uh, encourage this culture of uh, mandar in india which uh, we think that you know, it is uh, many of the lawyers uh, i so left to some people uh, there's no use let's argue about our case and leave it there as uh, mr datta said you know when you wear that gown you should have a feeling that you are duty to the client you are duty to the court you are duty to the society and your duty to the opposite side also so four duties you have to keep in mind i'm quite sure you know you will be give, able to give a right advice to the party whom you represent in the better interest because the party will not be able to see what is happening 10 years beyond from your experience as a lawyer for quite long you would know what is the fate of this particular litigation today and tomorrow and day after tomorrow and or 10 years also you will definitely know so that experience you can always share to the the party concerned and tell him that you no know, this is this is in your interest this is the way that you have to go so, and that is a good uh, guiding factor if the participating lawyers uh, 
So I always uh, have a feeling that the, the, the role that the lawyers play in either in mediation or in arbitration or in court cases also, particularly in Supreme Court. In Supreme Court, you know, so you come at what stage? You come at the stage where, you know, you have finished everything. <laughs> finished everything. And what is left in Supreme Court, that's the end of it. So there, the Supreme Court lawyers have a great role to play, according to me, in, in helping the parties to touch justice. Not get justice, to touch justice. There's no feeling that, you know, finally, in the, in the Supreme Court of uh, India, we have uh, touched the justice and put an end to the court. Uh, yesterday, somebody was uh, mentioning a, a case where, you know, a party failed, but the lawyer was, I thought, is it Rajiv? Yes, yes. We, yes. we had a dry run session yesterday. Yes, sir. He was mentioning, you know, he, he was very, uh, you know, uh, disturbed in facing the lawyer, in facing the client, but the client claimed with a packet of chocolate and told that, you know, Sir, don't worry. At least I'm happy that I'm out of court now. Tomorrow onwards, though I failed, my case is over from the court. That itself is a great blessing. <laughs> that way. So uh, it all depends on the lawyers finally acted. Thank you, Lata. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot, Lata. Uh, uh, I hope uh, things are good in Bangalore. We are going through tough times. So we all pray for uh, Bangalore as well. Uh, next question is... Delhi, Delhi is tougher, sir, now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, <coughs> the next question is coming from Mr. Dhruv Srivastav. Dev, you can unmute him. I'll just unmute him one second. Uh, uh, good afternoon, respected panelists. Uh, I, am I audible? Yes, 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 you are. Yes, sir. So, by uh, basically, thank you so much, uh, uh, Honorable Korean Joseph, uh, Ajay sir, and Rajiv sir, for uh, organizing such a brilliant interactive session for us. Uh, being a final year law student stuck in pandemic, these have been our only source of uh, knowledge sessions or inspirations which we have taken in this period. So my questions are basically, I have uh, two questions which I had asked in the chat. My first question was in relation to the appointment of arbitrators and the conduct of parties, uh, which uh, usually happen. Usually, uh, like I personally feel that our, uh, uh, even the firms and the advocates are a bit uh, litigation centric. So whenever they're appointing uh, arbitrators, they usually tend to go to uh, ex justices of uh, Supreme Court and High Court who might have the relevant ex expertise and might not have the rele relevant expertise. Even while, even while filing the statement of claims or statement of defense, they tend to oversight or, or, or include more of litigation practice and citing of cases, which might not even be relevant to arbitration practice and, and as a result causes unnecessary delay. So my question is basically, uh, for first question is that, uh, how can this predicament be tackled and how should our country as a whole approach this uh, uh, problem in arbitration? Rajiv, you cannot touch that, yeah. Sir, sir, I was thinking that uh, uh, this uh, appointment uh, uh, of uh, uh, retired judges, I think one of the questions that he wants to focus on, if I have understood him correctly, is that uh, there is a difficulty in choosing. But, uh, you know, I, I, I tell you that there is a very specific thing in our, our mind. Uh, especially uh, me, I am being a senior advocate. I am, I am not been a judge. I, I, I don't know whether I would have been a good judge or a bad judge. Or because I am not a judge at all, then I, I am very happy because I don't have to enter that area. But I must tell you, you know, uh, there is a people ask me a lot that you know you are getting into something. Uh, who will appoint you? You are a senior counsel only and uh, judges are there, no? And uh, there's a long practice in India that uh, under Section 11, if the parties are not agreeing, then they will uh, appoint a retired judge. I said, yes, it's there, I know. But let me tell you my experience. My experience, as I told you, I want to grow with this law of arbitration and see what is happening. Look at, look at it. Then we have these institutions coming in. I already told you about ICC. They don't have a panel. 
they select a person there is an independent panel they concentrate on a particular place find out a person um, i mean if it, it, it depends on how, what is the nature of the claim the point is that there is no, this fixation if i may say so of appointing retired district judges high court uh, judges etc is something it's a mindset who has to break this mindset we as, have as advocates yes sir we have to break it why do you think you think all the judges are uh, uh, free to do arbitrations after retirement the whole day no they have, they have now entered a chapter i feel every judge has contributed so much if i was ever a judge and i said okay i call it a day no i don't i don't think so so they, if you are yourself and it will take time it is it is it is not going to happen overnight i always used to ask people we have five or six top councils in this country how many arbitrations have they done as arbitrators apart from two or three the others don't go near it as arbitrators no as a council i take me i will go no problem so who has to do the change that is that you Raji, one reason is you know you people uh, are reluctant to take because you know uh, your fee is limited. Whereas okay. for the days we appear in arbitration before an arbitrator, your fee is counted by days we appear. Yes, But sir. for arbitrator, your fee is fixed. That's the reason. Sir, you are absolutely right. That is the prime reason. But there is the other reason because in arbitration you have to work so hard. Sir, writing an award, I I I have. I don't know how many uh, sleepless nights I have. No, no. I, I, I think I am writing something wrong. Writing an award is in itself, sir. I don't know. You have written more than so many thousands of judgments. I mean, I, I, I don't know. It must must have become nature with you, sir. It's very difficult. I write an award. I get sleepless nights because, and it, sir, arbitration is very tough. It's very tough. It's not that you go make, to, to, to make to make an award. I tell you honestly, it's more difficult than writing a judgment uh, uh, either in the high court or in supreme court because in in high court and supreme court you always have the benefit of a judgment from the lower forum. Yes. Right? Yes. Number one, number two uh, is limited to questions. Two, number three, there's no trial. Yes, Whereas sir. in arbitration, there's a full fledged trial, you know, and you have to <laughs> you have to write as if it is a. You are trying a suit and uh, you are writing a judgment after uh, 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 referring to the pleadings and uh, issues and then uh, yes, so many things. It's a very tough job. You know, hundred percent. I, I, I find uh, that it's a tougher job than writing a judgment there. Yes, <clears throat> that's right, sir. Because because you have the freedom of procedure also. You can you can ask them to submit something which others will not do it. So. Uh, point i am making is slowly we are we are going towards a system where senior counsels will will by their own commitment they will be able to come forward and people will acknowledge this D, da daic uh, uh, already is doing that but unfortunately on that i have they have a panel And uh, selection is made. See, I, I have always wished, you know, to have a co-arbitrator, a lawyer as a co-arbitrator would have been much, much better than a technical person sitting there. People have a misconception that you know you need a technical assistance. There is more than technical assistance. What you need is actually a legal approach as to how you appreciate these aspects. Right. And the presence of a lawyer with you as a co-arbitrator when you decide an arbitration or make an award is far better than. Uh, the retired the professionals uh, from the respective fields sitting there, and the other aspect I have noticed, sir, is that we, as arbitrators in commercial matters, especially, you must have when 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 I used to hear the phrase, "Do you have commercial sense in you?" What is that commercial sense? For example, if a factory is shut down and there is a dispute, what do you do? My first effort is to tell them to start the factory somehow. <laughs> Please. so so we will decide this but there has to be for example a person is holding something and is not supplying raw material is not supplied so first thing is first approach should be that there should be a revival for example when uh, sir you must have sat on company company court many times these winding up petitions are coming for some 
paltry amount or some even from for some substantial amount now this company should be wound up what was your your, your approach the court's approach all right but we will not shut down this company company will work we'll see how we can get you your money but the point is that commercial sense in commercial matters should always be there because you cannot uh, pass uh, orders which are which are very uh, i mean which, which which lack this this aspect of it. so that is one thing and then i think uh, uh, slowly slowly we will we will develop and we are developing i mean if, if it is not in my lifetime it will be in the future and i meet young people now sir they are so i am so amazed by this the new people new entrants who are coming i always wonder and go back what was i doing at that age when i was there and what are they doing of course we can argue like they have the computers they have the uh, you know where with all and everything but everybody doesn't have and it is the commitment it is totally a commitment to what you do for example in a session like this i can only say it's a learning process but are you enjoying it i have i cannot even with, without blinking my eyes i can say i am enjoying it so thoroughly today that i don't want this 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 interaction to end but the fact is we ultimately we have to make the difference you can get a seniors gown but if you are like you have chosen arbitration then you have to await your turn and your turn will come definitely it will come i am not saying it will not come once you get you sink yourself into it dive into it people will notice people will say yes it's a long process long due process so, so the next question is uh, coming from shobha uh, can you unmute shobha madam uh Excuse me, sir. If, if I may proceed with my second question, actually, I had mentioned I had two questions before. Uh, Dhruv, uh, you know, uh, don't you think uh, at this stage one question is enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> sir, actually, I had uh, quite a few questions, but <laughs> okay. Can you be quick? Yes, sir. It's a very small question. It's basically in uh, relation to the ordinance which was passed in arbitration in 2020. it had mentioned that any case which was induced by fraud would had a, would be stayed as, as a result of section 34 uh, application so don't you think that is de- derogatory to the rights of the judgment creditor who is actually supposed to be enjoying the fruits of the award which has been passed in his favor i think justice kurian should answer that because corruption fraud i think 2020 amendment is now coming 2019 amendment is not notified 2020 is coming we'll see i don't know justice kurian please yeah it's a basically fraud vitiates everything that's the reason why because once the fraud is unearthed it goes to the root of the issue that's the reason basically i think that's answered and uh, uh, now we uh, go to uh, ma'am shobha uh, dev can you unmute her just one second i'll just unmute her in a second i've asked to unmute herself Shobha, can you uh, unmute yourself? Is she not there? Oh, can we move on? We can move yeah, on. She is here. Yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I'm Shobha here. Shobha, mediator from Bangalore. But I'm sorry, I'm not able. There's some video problem. So I'll just ask the question. Please. Which I had just raised it, please. Yeah. So. that question sir if we commence private mediation proceedings can we convert it into a conciliation proceeding and draw an agreement that would constitute an award under the arbitration and conciliation act yeah uh, so by you are mixing all three concepts one is arbitration the other is mediation the third is conciliation see as far as uh, the, all these are party autonomy please keep in mind party autonomy arbitration is party autonomy it is for the parties to decide mediation is for the parties agreement conciliation also but it's not if in the process of mediation see you know in mediation there is no award there is only settlement and the settlement yes. has to be made uh, an award or a award they call it, a decree by the court it has to be sent to the court unless you decide that you now it will bind us as an agreement but if we need to have the honor of a decree then it should go to the court and get it uh, uh, stamped as a decree by the court Uh, whereas award is concerned 
in conciliation award, it has the force of a decree, right? Conciliation. So if in the process of mediation, if the party so choose, they can say it can be made as a conciliation award. So that, you know, that's how we, we, we sometimes do that because in mediation, in order to save time, because it is directly um, uh, executable, whereas uh, the other thing is only an agreement, uh, mediation, like here, settlement. Uh, here it is, it becomes an award. So if it in the process of mediation, if the parties so choose, they can make it uh, a conciliatory award so that uh, you have an award which has the force of a decree, right? And third, uh, whereas, uh, I'm on private mediation uh, proceedings, sir. Private mediation proceedings. Yeah, Shama, in private mediation proceedings, certainly it, the parties can uh, always say, no, let's make it an award. Let, let you be the conciliator and let there be an award, uh, conciliatory award. So it's certainly possible. <coughs> it's all left to the parties. It will, it will, it will help its enforcement. But uh, do we commence the proceedings under the Conciliation Act or we start with mediation and then convert it into conciliation? Is it mandatory to issue a notice of conciliation proceedings? You know, you can, that's why I said, you know, if the parties agree, party let's look, please. Yeah, it is ultimately the party's choice. If the parties are agreeable for this mode, no procedure can stand in the way of uh, the bill of the parties because ultimately they want to be bound by an award by a conciliation Please. or an agreement. So it's for them. So if they say that let's, let's have an award, and certainly. And if it is during um, the arbitration under section 33, an arbitral award on agreed terms shall be made in accordance with the section 31 and shall state that it is an arbitral award. Even if you settle also, <coughs> sorry, huh. even if settle also, it can be made an award. The treatment can itself be made uh, the basis of an award and uh, an award in terms of the settlement can also be passed. Yeah, Lord Chief, if I may just intervene for a second. I think what, uh, what Shobha ma'am was asking is when you start a mediation process, at the outset, in the midst of a mediation process, midway through a mediation process, can you convert it into a conciliation process or to effectively have an award and uh, a decree at the outset of a mediation process, should the process of conciliation be adopted with due notices and then proceed to make it easier for, an, for a decree under the mediation? I think that's what the question yeah. was also. I mean, I mean Marcent, um, it's for the parties. If in the course of mediation also, the parties say that you know, let us dispense with the procedural uh, uh, aspects of this conciliation and let's make it a conciliatory award, that's end of it. Because uh, it is their choice and it is their, uh, it's their decision final. And uh, you are only acting either as a mediator or as a conciliator. If they say that you please act as a conciliator, yes, you pass an award, a conciliatory award. With their much consent. Appreciate. Much appreciated, Your Lordship. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. The next in uh, line is Mr. Suhail Ahmed from uh, Bangalore again. Uh, Suhail, uh, can you unmute him? He was uh... Uh, now. Now that it was a legal question, please keep in mind the 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 scope of challenge of a conciliation award is much more than scope of challenge of a mediated settlement. Keep in mind because mediated settlement is ultimately the 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 the, the, the what what you have resolved or what you have evolved from by yourself and you have agreed. Whereas conciliatory award, probably there's a more involvement of a conciliator where the grounds of challenge will be a little more uh, wider. Just keep in mind that also the legal ramification in case you fail to comply with uh, the award or settlement. Uh, although the focus was uh, making uh, India a seat of arbitration, we are also getting into uh, some uh, final questions of the procedures, but uh, my lord have been uh, pleased to answer all of them. So next in uh, is Mr. Uh, Suhail Ahmed. Is Suhail there? Can you try? Suhail unmute is him. here. I have just asked him to unmute himself. Suhail, sir. Hmm. 
You can skip and go to the next one. Yes. Uh, Mr. Shekhar Gaikwad is there. Uh, can you ask? Uh, is is he interested in asking? Because he has put up some questions here. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. I am audible. Yes. yes. Sir, I recently handled uh, two arbitration proceedings. What I felt uh, was that most of the uh, contracts uh, which are drafted, they are so complicated in nature and many a times very non-executable conditions are put in the contracts. Is it is it the reason why uh, arbitration proceedings take a lot of time in India as compared to other countries where they try to keep the contracts very simple? Sekhar, uh, uh, you are from the administrative service? Yes, sir. I am from All India Service. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I saw you. So you are from the All India Service. Sekhar, uh, what happens is, you know, uh, we, uh, uh, unfortunately, we in India uh, are very poor draftsmen. True. See, Absolutely. Look at, look, look at the old uh, statutes we have. CPC, CRPC, IPC, Indian Evidence Act, Contract Act have been able to touch even a comma of those things. And whenever we are attempted to touch it, it has become complicated. Whereas you take at the newer statutes, the newer statutes, you know, recent statutes, which we ourselves have made. Drafting in India has been poor. I, I must I, I must admit, apologetically admit, it has been very poor. We make it complicated. I don't know. You are right. If you look at uh, the foreign contracts, they are uh, simpler. But uh, they have, uh, they, they know the, uh, the ramifications. Uh, so they put everything in mind and put it in schedules and keep the contract as simple as possible. And the final aspects into uh, the, the procedure or some other uh, um, areas, they were just uh, junk area. They, they just simply put it. Well, uh, contract as such is simple. India contract, uh, drafting of a contract has been very, very complicated, so much so it takes a lot of time in arbitrations also to interpret. As Shagar rightly said, you know, the role of an arbitrator finally is to interpret the clause in the arbitration agreement also, what is actually the parties intended at the time of entering the contract. That is actually the role the, the arbitrator has to play. And by virtue of the complications, because if they, the man who helped, I, I know uh, uh, I, I, right now I've been dealing with a contract where, you know, it has been completely one-sided in the sense, you know, uh, it was intended to have the contract truly. Totally. I'm sure, you know, in drafting that contract, um, uh, the, the contractor had an uh, one up uh, ship or an you know, uh, upper hand. Whereas, you know, if you leave it to the technical draftsman, um, from your side, you know, from the administrative side, from the civil service, you know, you always draft it so complicated in, uh, you know, you make it so complicated that, you know, finally, you will not be able to uh, have a, a comprehensive view of it, you know. The one that you intend that in the first chapter will not be the one that you are gaining in the second chapter or third chapter. The one that you wanted to secure in the second chapter will not be the one that you are actually uh, finding it as a final position towards the final uh, chapter in the contract. So particularly in concessional agreements, I know, I'm sure you'll be referring to concessional agreements. Concessional agreements, you're right, it's a very important aspect while drafting the contract. But unfortunately, the arbitrator cannot redraft the contract, the arbitrator can only interpret the contract. True, true, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dev, uh, Mr. Suhail uh, is there now. He wants to ask the question. Can you unmute him? I'll just uh, ask him to unmute himself. Yeah. Easier. Suhail. Mr. Dev, I have unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir, you are can. audible. Very well audible. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. You are audible. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, I thank Justice uh, Joseph Kurian for the uh, for the wonderful talk that he has given. I have uh, one particular question. Um, in case where in the arbitration agreement, the seat of arbitration and the jurisdiction of courts is two different. Uh, uh, let's say the seat of seat of arbitration is Delhi, and the jurisdiction of courts is given to Chandigarh. Then where would my Section 11 petition lie for uh, appointment of an arbitrator? 
Say seat governs the law, no? Very clear now, sir. Yeah, that, that's a settled position now. Seat governs the law. Venue is that you choose, you can sit anywhere, even in Dubai, even if, even if you have a seat here in Delhi, yeah. you can sit anywhere. So seat governs the law. I don't know why, uh, why having uh, decided the seat to be Delhi, you have chosen to the uh, civil jurisdiction of the court to be in Chandigarh. I don't know, it is uh, it's very complicated uh, in drafting. As Mr. Sagan said, you know, in drafting the contract, you, you, put, you commit this sort of uh, uh, all of this. Uh, because it is a very subtle position now, because seat and venue has been a very complicated issue. Right. But after that, Balco's judgment, everything is very clear now. Seat governs the law, and venue is the place where you sit, and you can choose any jurisdiction. But normally, uh, you have to go by the law that is the seat, and so 11 should normally go only to Delhi. The procedural law will be okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, at this stage, uh, uh, not normally, it should go only to Delhi. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's true. That's true. At this stage, uh, I, I would uh, myself uh, be, would be asking a question oh, if not permitted. Yes, Sanjay. Mm -hmm. Lordship had mentioned about Section 11.6 application. One of my applications is pending for one and a half years now. <laughs> uh, corona has also contributed to the delay. But uh, in these cases, uh, do we think that Supreme Court should have something special sale kind of thing to make it expedient? Shall I tell you one solution? Sir. I, I, uh, uh, I don't know how many of my co arbitrators will be listening to me. See, this is one reason where you know you can have a friendly talk with the other side. And say agree that no, let's let's agree on an arbitrator and finish it off. Correct. Let's go to the court. Because one and a half years, neither you nor me are in a position to have any solution on the arbitration. So let's decide on the ABC person. If it is a, th I've seen many contract, many arbitrators, many many contracts. You know, uh, you know this position. No, the, the contract would have named three arbitrators, but even then, the parties can still choose for one arbitrator, sole arbitrator. It's still permissible. So I've seen a couple of cases where you know. Uh, you know, uh, having had uh, maybe you know some sort of uh, um, uh, wonderful, <laughs> I say wonderful in court experience, that they would have sort thought of uh, choosing a single arbitrator. It saves your time, it saves your money, it saves saves you so many headaches. So despite uh, the contract having specified three, you can still choose if the parties agree for a, a sole arbitrator, whom you have confidence on his uh, integrity, on his credibility. And his capacity. Three aspects are both. All three, all three are very important. Uh, and in uh, the two cases, at least, um, uh, I don't know what I can say, but uh, two cases where the uh, parties agreed that no, let's dispense with three and uh, we'll make you the sole arbitrator. And I'm so happy it was done because we all know, even despite being three, also um, what is the uh, special advantage we are gaining. So that's number one. Number two, for the time, uh, uh, Sagar, I'm not uh, saying anything uh, otherwise. I'm only saying out of my experience. But I certainly value the type of assistance uh, technical people from your experience you can provide from the engineering side, from the administrative side. There's different issue all to them. But that assistance can be obtained from the, uh, 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 from the lawyer side also when you present the case. And uh, there's a provision for expert opinion also. It's still permissible under the Arbitration Act. If the parties agree for a neutral expert, we can have it uh, expert opinion. So international arbitrations, they normally go for a, a parties expert, uh, then the tribunal's expert. And then by, because the, the experts are presented by the parties, <laughs> then that will be put to a neutral uh, expert appointed by the tribunal, and the tribunal goes by that. So I value that procedure also. But I'm saying is, you know, uh, Ajay, I, I must say, you know, being a, being a friendly procedure, just put a word across to your party. So instead of waiting in the corridors of the court, now that one year, because we intended to have a result in six days. Instead of six days for getting a nominee arbitrator, now it is one and a half years. Why not we think of somebody, you tell somebody, I will also tell somebody, why not we sit across the table and find somebody after all, we are not saying deciding. We are only say, deciding as to who should be the arbitrator. Correct. Because it is arbitration, 
no doubt about it then who should be the arbiter is only dispute why do we spend so much time in court now that we have spent sufficient time let's agree on that have a cup of tea and then discuss have a virtual cup of tea and then decide uh, you choose a person and you know finally get him around and finish it up that's the best option i think sir you have said something very very interesting because uh, uh, ajay can approach the other side lawyer the lawyer's contribution this can be immense both the lawyers can say oh forget the court let us do this and that can be done and we can file a joint memo in the court and finish it up you don't have to wait for the order also you can right. file a memo in the court that we have agreed on this process Correct. court will be too happy yeah yeah in fact uh, there are cases i uh, i'll just uh, i got my answer but uh, i'll just inform there are certain cases in which the other party actually is not looking forward for arbitration so in this particular case what happens is the other party was not not even taking the notices in calcutta and uh, they uh, after after three notices finally i had to send a lawyer from my office because my client is from kuwait oh, so okay. this indian party doesn't want to even enter into uh, uh, this uh, uh, arbitration at all they they are avoiding it Yeah, and reason is you know this Indian party knows uh, finally that Kuwaiti will be fed up and then say chhod do. So, uh, the, uh, although we already have uh, gone past two hours, but there are a few questions with uh, your permission. If I can, but uh, as Raju said, you know between the lawyers, you should have uh, the party himself has not received the notice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then of course you have to go for publication. Exactly. I think we have served the notice to them, and then Corona also came to his aid. <laughs> so uh, once I had this wonderful experience in Jabalpur High Court, uh, we had moved application for appointment of arbitrator. So when I went there, so I found a senior counsel standing on the other side. So I was surprised. Why a senior counsel would uh, come here to argue a matter of uh, appointment? Eleven six. Eleven six. so this senior counsel asked for a date of 2 months saying that i want to study the matter so i told him sir this is a wonderful way of asking a date in a matter we were in which you have nothing to argue <laughs> finally i told the judge that it, it's it's your prerogative to appoint the arbitrator and you do it let us finish it off so it was done on that day but uh, the thing is the clients at times uh, come with the counsel say humko kaise bhi date chahiye we want a date <laughs> so those issues are also there uh, yeah because so, uh, indian law uh, legal fraternity the first day of appearance is for a date <laughs> <laughs> there are too many complicated things sir yeah. even arbitration is the first appearance they ask for dates so That's we always right. prepare a draft of the order and come so that you know uh, we will not allow them for dates we will we'll, we'll circulate this draft and come prepared for your business we uh, we want them to do business in arbitration uh can we can we ask one or two questions more uh, there are people if yeah one, make one, it yeah make one, it one, one or two one, max one. max two and finish it yeah uh um, shivangi parekh wants to ask a question uh, dev can you uh, unmute her just one second as well good afternoon everyone i hope i'm audible yes Uh, thank you so much for giving me the chance to present my question on this forum. If you could kindly throw some light on the approach of courts towards uh, the deposit of money decrees and um, the stay of award during that time. Yes, yeah, Shivangi, it all depends on how you are able to persuade on the merits of your matter. In case you are caught up in thirty four, that you know the moment the court is, uh, if you are able to convince the court that there is a decree and. Uh, The, the the idea of the other side is only to uh, only a dilatory tactics to postpone the inevitable evil and if the court is uh, uh, convinced that you know a, a, a direction for a pre deposit will make the party come around for a final solution then you know you'll be able to succeed but it all depends on how you are able to persuade the court for, to make it uh, uh, make a pre deposit is there any statutory uh, provision to this effect uh rajiv yes, statutorily yes, it doesn't say about the pre deposit it all goes by the conventions i believe you know the, the practice that each court follow yes okay. uh, in uh, for example you know in cpc you know the moment the money decree comes in first appeal you always ask for a, a deposit mm -hmm. like uh, yeah 
in arbitrations, there is no provision for a, uh, to my knowledge, uh, there's no provision for a pre-deposit at the stage of 34. It okay. all depends upon how you are able to convince the court that the need to secure decree. Mm -hmm. That's right, sir. That's, that's correct, sir. And may I know if the deposit is 100% or only a certain percent of... Again, same. same no, if you are convinced about your full right, why do you want to compromise on percentage? Say 100%. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so Le much. Less, less probably the cost. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, Dave, uh, the last question is, Mr. K.C. Jain Advocate, he's from Agra. And uh, these days, he's practicing in Supreme Court sitting in Agra, thanks to Corona. <laughs> Earlier, he used to drive down to Delhi to appear in the Supreme Court, oh a very experienced God. lawyer. Is he there? I'm not able to see his name over here as KC Jain right now. Probably he must have logged in from... In case he is not there... Then uh, next SK Jan. SK Jan is here with a question. Yeah, yeah. unmute him. He, he was also wanting to ask a question. Yes, I've just asked him to unmute himself. Uh, Mr. SK Jan, unmute yourself. No. Mrs. Sumesh Arora is there. He also wanted to ask a question. Sumesh sir is here. Can you unmute him? I've just asked to unmute himself too. This could be the probably the last yeah. one. Asked, that you said, yeah. Can you hear? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Justice Kevin, and uh, thanks, Rajivji, for uh, such a lucid talk on a topic on which people like me do not know much. But definitely, I, I will uh, become much enlightened once I move back from here. Just one small question. I've been dealing uh, with uh, mediation on the taxation side. Uh, being an ex-bureaucrat myself and our lawyers for, for 12 years standing. Uh, what I find is, you know, the, the government is the biggest litigation, no doubt about that. But the efforts of the mediation are very few. Like in the tech side, you have the settlement commission. And uh, even those are being disbanded now. Inter, uh, this uh, IT, 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 inter, Income Tax Settlement Commission is being abolished. Uh, GST doesn't have a provision. Only customs will remain, God knows for how long. But basically, the efforts which were made, uh, were made for mediation are also now going away. Uh, uh, the statute provided for it, but uh, somehow it has remained non-starter. Could be, you know, because only the technocrats were there on the board and no judicial person. The net result was that even in the settlement commission, you were finding that there was uh, a strong revenue bias and judicial person not being there, that balancing which at least happens in the ITAT or uh, CSTAT was also not happening there. So could there be some guidelines by some of the courts stating that whenever such uh, statutes come up with the uh, provisions of mediation, there should be at least one judicial person? I feel uh, there's a very strong need for it. You are right, because you know in settlements, uh, a judicial approach is very important. True. Rather than uh, say uh, the, 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 the amount that you can uh, compromise, the way you can uh, give up to the extent you can go, but if the the commission itself is in a position to know and to convince itself that it has a judicial basis also, it will be very uh, uh, easier for them to have a final sense. So I agree with you, Mr. Somesh, that um, uh, it's a wonderful idea to have uh, a judicial member in such a settlement commissions. Thank but you. as you as you rightly said, you know, uh, the government is taking the one side, they are preaching that they are... Uh, Pro mediation, and they are also a party. The government of India is a party to the Singapore International uh, Mediation Convention. Yes, Singapore Convention, we call it Singapore Convention. But still, you know, one 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 by one, they are taking away all these settlement uh, provisions from all the statutes, particularly the tax and statutes also. And the Supreme Court has come heavily upon them, even after you suffer a, a small uh, uh, um, order from the tribunal. Why do you come up in support? So Supreme Court has finally laid down that you know, if the amount is less than 20, I think it is raised to 50 lakhs now. No SLP. Eh? 50 lakhs, sir. I think it is 50 now. No SLP if the amount involved is um, uh, less than 50. Right. So situation can be remedied rather than, uh, you know, settlement commission being abolished, which may not be a very good approach on the part of the government. It's not a good approach. It's certainly not a good approach because, you know, in settlements, finally, as you also know, 
Finally, you know, the, the major chunk of the amount is actually the penalty and the interest also. Where, you know, certainly the government should be, uh, should, should have a, a large heart and a clearer approach, uh, you know, not to penalize the person uh, in, in such matters. Yes. See, you are, you are also very right in saying that it is the courts now which will have to take up these cuddles with the government. Because, because maybe in some matter or the other, and I'm sure they will do it. I'm sure they will, they will definitely do it. Because it is not helping, but it is complicating the whole problem. True. Very right. Very right. Thanks a lot. A wonderful question from Mr. Somesh Arora, uh, who resigned as Commissioner of Customs only to enrich our profession of lawyers. And he wrote uh, a book on GST, which was, again, uh, he was honored by the Chief Justice uh, two years back. And uh, this year, he's, he has come up with this book on uh, PMLA. And uh, we, in one of the webinars, he spoke for more than two hours and 50 minutes on PMLA. So he's a very thorough man on indirect taxation. And uh, before we uh, lead to concluding this, uh, uh, two things that come to my mind. Uh, Justice Korean has a, a, you know, uh, indicated at the very practical approach of how to make India a seat. You know, I'm reminded of medical tourism. A couple of days back, I was reading uh, Barack Obama's uh, book. I don't know which one he has wrote, four of them. In uh, one of them, he says that, you know, the Asians have produced everything cheaper than U.S., and now the business goes to Asia. So uh, everything in London is 100 times more uh, expensive than India. So we can give justice uh, at 1% of the rate of what London gives and uh, Dubai at least uh, uh, they, they are 40 times or 30 times more than us. So uh, as far as expediency part is concerned, our, our legal community, as Mr. Datta has indicated, that the youngsters are too good to be true. And uh, they are more responsible, more knowledgeable. I'm looking at a very bright future. And now that uh, people like Justice Korean are there, who are now free of the uh, shackles of the code of conduct of uh, the seat, the bench, uh, his contribution can be far more greater than what he was doing there. And uh, now in the end, uh, you know, the kind of messages I am receiving on my phone and uh, here uh, in the chat also, I never realized that uh, this uh, webinar can go to this greater heights. Um, I am too small to thank uh, uh, this session. I again uh, request and come to uh, re uh, request the aid of Mr. Rajiv Datta to uh, thank uh, Justice Korean and the participants. Sir. Uh, thank you, Ajay. I think uh, we've had a long session. I think we have even overshot the time that was prescribed. Uh, so uh, in the end, thank you very much, uh, Justice Korean. It was, it was a delight, and as I said, it was enjoyable. It is something, if you, if you look at it only from the point of view of uh, that I want an academic exercise, it wasn't that. It was, and, uh, you know, everything that you said, basically, it, 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 it was, it was in, a, in a manner where we have this atmosphere of friendliness, as you said, and I think that, that greatly helps us. Uh, so I must also thank, uh, since you have given me the job to thank, I think the coordinator, the the uh, and and all the all the participants, thank and of course sir. Ajay, thank you very much sir. for organizing this, and I think we all look forward to many more such uh, webinars, and uh, it's not only that uh, we'll have these curfews on Saturdays and Sundays we can utilize much better way. But uh, a person like Justice Kurian, who is so busy, he must be very busy. And of course, uh, this, is a, this is a very uh, tough exercise. It is not as if we simply can just come and uh, speak. Uh, in fact, I'm reminded of something uh, in the end. You know, uh, Ms., Ms., uh, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister Churchill was one asked this question. Uh, he was actually invited to a certain 
uh, you know congregation or some seminar or something and he's, when he when they approached him they told him you have to just come and speak for 5 minutes sir. so just uh, so mr prime minister churchill told them oh okay 5 minutes fine uh, you will have to give me 3 months time so they said sir only for 5 minutes sir he said yes i i i must tell you if you had asked me to speak for 15 to 20 minutes to half an hour i would have asked for two or three days and if you ask me to speak for ever i can come with you right now i'll come with you right now but if you want to if you want me to speak only for five minutes i will take three months to prepare <laughs> so there is there is some sense in that that you know we uh, when we consolidate and we want to approach our audience in a manner that we want to do of course this is a vast subject and in this time that we had we have covered the ethos i would say of the amendments how the courts have reacted and here is an international arbitrator retired supreme court judge who has given us some nuances now this is the way to work if you come to an end like this then do this some questions were also asked can i convert mediation into a conciliation can i convert conciliation to uh, arbitration uh, for for an award etc etc thank you very much everyone it has been a lovely afternoon started in the morning actually and thank you once again thank you it is a wonderful platform for me also pleasure was equally mine with uh, uh, people like us uh, geekwat and somesh and datta and ajay and all my young lawyers also participating sangar yes so many i can see i can see anishu bade also she was also putting something in the chat box also so many people uh, people are interested have coming not for the sake of satisfying somebody not for the sake of uh, showing their face but they people wanted to participate right. so it's a good platform thank you so much and stay safe god bless thank, thank you sir thank, thank you sir we close this uh, uh, webinar now thank, thank you. you ajay it was a wonderful initiative thank you and, and one last thing to add sir to make india a center for arbitration we need more justice korean and more J rajiv dattas <laughs> if not ajay yeah thank you <laughs> we close the